<clears throat> many of us actually we avoid a lot of uh, growth opportunities just because of the money decisions. How many of you avoid it? Yeah, you avoid the growth decisions just because of the money, and uh, you feel that it is it is the only criteria to actually do something. Broadly categorize them in a very very th simple three terms, which we all can actually resonate. One is called the poor mindset, scarcity mindset, and the rich mindset. Okay, poor mindset, scarcity mindset, and the rich mindset. So, what would be the poor mindset uh, behavior? Would be avoidance is the poor mindset uh, behavior. They always feel it is very difficult to have money. Okay, so <clears throat> they hate the wealthy people. They feel that they are uh, by default because of their birth they are poor. Okay, and uh, Money is kind of a root for all the evil things which are happening around the world. These are the poor mindset aspects that we are aware of. Okay? The scarcity mindset are the people, if I get more money, I'll be very happy. Okay? If I save today, I'll be rich. Okay? If I have enough money, then I'll do something. Okay? And uh, if I have so much of money, then I'll be free. So let's say I want to earn one crore and I'll be free. If I could buy just by X, Y, Z, then I would be happy. Okay. <clears throat> I would be happy. Now, these people have a, a behavior where uh, they always feel there is a lack. If, 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 if. So, there's always a lack, lacuna, uh, limitations in their mind. That I don't have enough money. If I have some enough thing, then I'll do X, Y, Z. It could be learning. It could be going to enjoy the life, uh, have a lifestyle. So, even if they have a lakhs of rupees in their bank account, they always feel poor. Okay? Even though they have a lot of money in their PF, savings, mutual fund, fixed deposit, they always feel poor. So they're not poor mindset, but they feel poor automatically. Okay, And the rich mindset is something which you understand very well and uh, which, uh, which I emphasize a lot for you. Okay, And this mindset is all about <clears throat> money is abundant. It's the exchange of value. And the more value that I exchange, the more money I can always achieve. So the question is always about whether I can actually increase the value exchange. Okay, So they always look for the opportunities to add value, the growth aspect. And if your money behavior is uh, in any of these three categories, I would uh, sincerely want every one of you to think about uh, the mindset first and then money. Because see, by money, how many of you have seen that the poor people are very generous? Even if they have less, they can actually share. Yeah, they're very generous. How many of you have seen that... Uh, we at the middle class are not so generous. And if you will find the rich people are also generous. You don't see their generosity, but they are also generous because they appreciate that. Okay. So uh, your individual experience could be different. But what I have seen is the middle class, right? Middle class is something uh, uh, which are always having that uh, mindset of a scarcity. Okay. They're always uh, born and brought up with a kind of a scarcity that they, they feel inside. Not they have actually. Physically, they do not have. But inside, they feel poor. They get into the poor mindset very easily. Now, think about it. When did you actually observe this? Did you observe in your behavior? Yes? No? Yeah. <clears throat> so, now, the behavior of money always comes with a value, as I mentioned. Okay? Something of not value to you and you feel generous. It doesn't mean that your behavior has changed. Do you understand this? Yeah. Something which is of not so much of value to you and you observe yourself to be generous. It doesn't mean that you have changed your money behavior. So, for example, let's say you have two pens. Somebody asks and come and say, hey, can you borrow? Can you lend me a pen? And uh, you'll say, yeah, yeah, take it. No problem. Yeah. And you don't bother to probably bring it back and you don't feel a lose, loss like a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's pen wapas nahi di. Sorry, pen thi. But then you forget at the next day and you feel like, right? And then you feel like, okay, I'm rich. I, I don't do it, Rakesh. Okay. So something which is of uh, insignificant value for you. There you show your generosity in calling yourself having a rich mindset is a poor definition of rich mindset. If anybody understood the tongue twisters. Okay. So you need to ask yourself, do I actually use that on my regular behavior? Do I feel blessed? Do I have that richness in my thoughts? Many of us actually, we avoid a lot of uh, growth opportunities just because of the money decisions. How many of you avoid it? Yeah. You avoid the growth decisions just because of the money. And uh, you feel that it is it is the only criteria to actually do something. 
and you are again showing the behavior which is a scarcity behavior okay where you might have something but you feel always the lack of it so some of you have taken the debt how many of you are in debt whatever is the debt that could be personal i mean home loan car loan this loan that loan or you have landed or borrowed money from somewhere right so some of you are in debt and you always feel the burden of the debt yeah burden of the debt now when you actually took up the debt did you have any money mindset coming in place no it was in place what did you realize that if i have x amount of money i would be able to achieve this so you borrowed it once you borrowed it now you feel the lack of it and you continue to feel the lack of it in the debt now financial terms any buying of the house is a crime because financially it is not a viable option <laughs> in the financial prudence money which is used to buy the liabilities is a waste of money all the home loans are the waste of money all the assets which depreciate is a waste of money all the assets which appreciate is the investment so the question is whether we are investing on the assets or we are investing on the liabilities now we may say that no we need to have one house for my parents for my pride everybody one house with an emotional engagement fine but with what financial prudence or what financial cost is a question so how many of you have gone out of your pocket and bought something just to satisfy your emotional needs okay these are called the status status behavior status behavior is if i have my own home i feel like i have arrived okay and you use money to show the status i have this car then uh, i have arrived i have this watch i have this shoes if i have this brand then uh, i have arrived so you use money for the status and then feel the scarcity now most of the middle class or the mid level professionals have been always told and conditioned that uh, having your own house is always good yeah your parents actually seed that in your childhood only that beta ja ke bada kar lena and uh, you kind of uh, put that into your mind ha main mere mummy papa ka sapna pura karunga okay so you keep doing that throughout your life out of 40 years of your professional life 20 years you remain in the debt how many of you realize yeah first you actually start with a very small a bike on loan then mobile on loan then household thing on loan then the small house on loan then car on loan then big house on loan then they are education loan then your children's education loan then if nothing happens then the marriage loan so we have learned to live the life of debt and it has been uh, conditioned to us that yeah living that life of debt remaining the scarcity is the right way to live that's how the economic works is it economy works yeah but how much is the portion of the retail loan versus the corporate loan proportion anybody any idea this is called the logical understanding very less percentage <laughs> okay very less percentage so corporate is getting the billions and millions of loan versus you getting some few lakhs but who behave poorly corporate don't behave poorly they can still go outside in the sneak away from the country and still live the luxurious life and uh, you remain in the debt and do the suicide isn't it now that's your uh, moral compass which is saying that but ask yourself hasn't your money behavior actually compel you to do something and we don't realize it and we are doing it every day think about your every day decisions regarding the money and you will find that you never enjoy the money so now let's probably bring it down to the career path okay you want the companies to recognize you promote you give you a 100% salary high because you feel you deserve yes everybody wants it yes or no you want companies to give you promotion salary hikes increment of the extraordinary proposal yeah because you feel you deserve because of your experience knowledge skill talent expertise what do you do when it comes to investing in yourself that defines whether you deserve it or not because that money behavior will showcase whether this person really deserves because if in your self image think about it if investing in yourself is a questionable decision do you expect that the outsiders will also question yes or no if you question the investment in yourself why would outsider will not do who doesn't even know the you and then you expect that okay i should be getting this that that is the reason we always put that uh, if you put the uh, more investment in yourself that is always an appreciative or compounding asset which can never uh, depreciate that is only asset which compounds at an exponential rate not any of the assets around you and uh, you may probably learn it hard way ultimately okay but it will be too late how many of you are too late in that position now already past 15 years 20 years and uh, then you realize that yeah i need to change that i need to learn this i need to x y z i need to get the certificates so your education is never a bad investment okay but right education not any <clears throat> so what is needed for your career 
that is to be defined first once you define that then there should be no looking back but you expecting somebody else to appreciate your value without you appreciating your value is a poor mindset of money okay you expecting somebody to appreciate your value without you appreciating your value and most of the people in the mid career generally feel that that i should be appreciated okay for your current work hard work expertise knowledge and skill okay one of the thing which i which i always realize the loss that we make okay even though we are very smart very analytical very very logical but the biggest loss is the not fulfilling the potential in the life how many of you agree with that the biggest loss in financial terms emotional terms everything not fulfilling our own potential is the biggest loss in the world rest of the loss you can bear even if you have a bad debt you can actually recover if you have lost your home you can recover if you have lost your car you can recover but this it's a very difficult aspect so when you come to the money behavior if the three things which you are observing right now i want you to write down where you are observing the poor mindset scarcity mindset and the rich mindset now the people in the debt they say because they are in the debt they cannot take any other things which is their financial prudence were at this point of time but they have not used that financial prudence while taking the debt correct now how to get out of the debt now it will be customized plan but the one of the thing which you need to ask is there are only two ways you can actually become rich either by saving or by increasing okay have you seen anybody becoming rich by just saving 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 yeah how much you can save 10% 20% 30% 40% 50% of the income see saving itself just by saving itself cutting our down on many things creates the scarcity mindset did you realize that yeah it itself creates the scarcity mindset so always ask yourself how do i increase income not a saving and increasing income requires a abundance mindset that is the only difference even if you are investing in mutual fund shares stocks any assets real estate anything that you feel doesn't matter but the moment you are making a decision and your mindset is if i invest in this i will save you have already done the investment for the wrong reason i hope all of you realize that okay if i invest in something it will save for the rainy day it will save for x y z so what you are saying to yourself right now abhi main emi de sakta hu what will happen if i become old yeah i am saving for that rainy day so that when i retire i have at least my own home that's what you say to yourself is it it now what you are saying that in future even after working for 40 years also i'll be remaining poor that is what you have told that is the intention with which you are buying something how many of you realize the mistake that is the intention with which you buy something and say that it is my asset and unfortunately by the time the 20 years are gone you already paid the double of the prices of your loan and you feel like wow loan is over i am debt free rakesh you are not debt free you have already made it full of yourself by paying double of what you have actually taken so you are not debt free you have gone into loss already so if your appreciation of the asset unless you are probably in the most developing cities your appreciation of the asset in your re regular town or uh, cities don't happen as much as we are paying in the interest and you can always calculate on the financial calculator which are available on the home loan part okay it is always said that buying the property on the rent always is very financially prudent compared to outright buy okay because it doesn't put you in the debt you can leverage that and use the money for the right purposes okay so today i want you to probably find out for the <coughs> for the lot of money behavior that we demonstrate today okay it comes from our conditioning now the th things that i said it will only remain with you for this next 15 20 minutes after that you'll be getting into your own money behavior okay so what you need to do is you need to write it down and uh, probably give the forgiveness now where you have exactly demonstrated that money behavior okay where you have exactly dem uh, demonstrated that money behavior okay now in the shop when you are probably going and uh, or if you are going into the hotel and you are probably hesitating to put the money for the waiters for the drivers for the valet parking and so on and so forth you feel it is always less are paisa diya na hotel mein abhi ho gaya correct it is always less for you i uh, i used to be like you by the way i am not no saint 18 years i was just like this in fact not 18 20 years till 2020 i was just like this until i realized and uh, unblock this part of my money behavior because i have a very hard childhood where the money was always scarce it's very limited very i would say not even available forget about limitation okay so we lived our life on the borrowed money throughout 21 years of my life okay and uh, that has brought a lot of uh, money uh, behaviors in me but now i look at it for the last 3 years or so i have always seen money as a value exchange 
So, for example, you are earning one lakh. Now, your job is to distribute that in the value exchange. So, let's say you are taking the value, yeah, from your maid, from your drivers, from the grocery store, from the people you buy the things. So, you are exchanging your value with the employer, and now you are distributing that value exchange from your side. So, think about is the circulation of money which is happening through the value value curve. And once you realize that, yeah, this money has to be circulating through the value. Once you realize that, you don't feel like money is going out of your pocket or something. You'll always feel that, okay, somebody is adding more value. Now, I have to just pass it on as a value. So, I, uh, I earn 3 lakh, 4 lakh, 5 lakh rupees. I have to now pass it on to the people who are just adding value to my life. So, the comfort that you get today, it's a value. Yeah, you don't uh, probably clean your house and mates are coming. That means you are getting that comfort. That's your value. You may not feel it, but that's the value that you're passing out now. Correct? So, mobile you buy is a value to you. So, you give money to them. So, consider money as a value medium. And you will not find the behavior that you have. So, pass the money. The more that you actually consider it as a value exchange, the less mindset or the behavior that you get into of the poverty or the scarcity in your career, in your life as well. And probably also teach that in your family members as well. Don't. It doesn't mean that you have to take it for granted, but you have to just consider it as a value exchange.